We're conducting a statistical hypothesis test to find out which team rules the fandom, Team Edward or Team Jacob. We've surveyed 100 fans, and 53 of those fans cheer for Team Edward. The question we want to ask ourselves is, can we say that most Twilight fans prefer Team Edward? And here, down here, where we're saying Twilight fans, we really mean of all of the Twilight fans that exist, not just these hundreds surveyed, but of all Twilight Twilight fans, can we say that most prefer Team Edward just based on this survey? And then we have this little part that says at the 5% significance level, and that's really statistical speak. And what this means, the 5% means that if our answer to this question is yes, then we have a 5% chance of being wrong. So if we say yes, most do prefer Team Edward, then we'll have 95% assurance that we're right. There's always a small chance that we'll be wrong, the 5% percent chance in this case. We have five steps to performing any hypothesis test. We must check our assumptions, formulate our hypotheses, calculate our test statistic and p-values, and then formulate our conclusion. Our assumption when we're dealing with a test for proportions is going to be that we have randomized data and a large sample size. And when we go back to check the original problem, we see that we do have randomly surveyed data and we have 100 people, so that is a pretty large sample size, so we've satisfied our two assumptions here. Whenever we're doing a hypothesis test for proportions, our null hypothesis has to be that the proportion is equal to some particular value. And then we always have these three choices for our alternative hypothesis. One is that the proportion is not equal to that same value. Two is that the proportion is less than that value. And three is that the proportion is greater than that value. Our alternative hypothesis, oddly enough, is the thing that we want to prove. And in our particular scenario, the thing we want to prove is that most Twilight fans prefer Team Edward. And so the way we're going to prove that most, most means more than half. So greater than half, well that's the same thing as greater than 0 0.5. So our proportion of people is going to be greater than, so we're going to use this, and it's going to be P greater than 0 0.5. That's our alternative. That's the thing we want to prove. Because P is greater than 0 0.5 in our alternative, then P must be equal to 0 0.5 in our null hypothesis. So then what happens is we run the hypothesis test and we find whether we can accept this alternative hypothesis or whether we just have to stay with the null. We never really accept the null. We never say the null is true, but we'll leave things as they are and say we cannot conclude our alternative hypothesis. So now let's actually compute our test statistic and p-value so we can find out the conclusion. We'll be using our TI-83 or 84 calculator to help assign the test statistic and the p-value. To compute the test statistic and the p-value, we'll be using this stat test one prop z test. So we do stat and then we scroll to test. And then we want to do the one prop z test, that's option 5, so I'll press 5. Our proportion, hypothesized proportion, is 1 half or 0.5. And then we had 53 people who said they did prefer Team Edward out of 100. So our x is 53 and our n is 100. And then our alternative hypothesis is greater than 0 0.5 because we want to know at most. So we choose the greater than option. and then we calculate and our calculator gives us the p-value and the z-value. So it gives us our test statistic, the z-value of 0.6 and the p-value of 0.27. And now that we have this p-value, we'll need to know what to do with it in our conclusion. We can actually use this chart and compare p to alpha. So if p is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and that means that we do accept our alternative hypothesis. But but our p-value is actually greater than alpha because we usually use an alpha of 0.05 and certainly when we compare this to alpha, that's going to be greater than 0.05. 
Sometimes we use different alpha values. We can use alpha values of 0.1, and in some cases we can even use them as high as 0.2, although that's very, very rare, but we certainly don't ever get more than 0.27. So in every case that we would consider, our p-value that we have would be greater than the alpha value, and in that case, we do not reject. And when we do not reject, we have to say some wishy-washy statement that there's just not enough evidence. So in our particular case, there is not enough evidence to conclude that most Twilight fans prefer Team Edward, so we're just not sure enough. If we had a larger sample size, so if we increased our sample size from 100, then we might have enough data to make a conclusion here to say that most fans prefer Team Edward. How large would our sample size need to be? Well, that's a whole nother video.